Good morning, Eagles. Happy Thursday. It is time for us to start another amazing Olin day. Every day we take a moment to honor our country with the Pledge of Allegiance. At this time, I'd like you to please stand and face the flag. Place your right hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Eagles, today I'd like to talk to you about creativity by telling you the story of Ms. Alma Woodsy Thomas. There is Ms. Thomas. You might guess, because you can see what she's holding, what she's famous for. Born in Columbus, Georgia, Alma grew up in a home surrounded by lush landscapes and beautiful plants. In her youth, she showed promise in architecture, but was truly in love with art. She said that when she walked into her first art classroom in high school, she felt like she was entering heaven. She enjoyed working with children and pursued a career as a kindergarten teacher. She then moved on to junior high and continued to teach for 35 years. While she was a teacher, she continued painting and pursued her master's degree in art education from Columbia University in New York City during her summers. She is most often associated with the group of artists belonging to the color field movement, painters who worked only with large shapes or fields of color to express themselves. Though this is what we mean. These are some of Alma's paintings. As you can see, she paints with a lot of color. Here's another one of her paintings. When she retired from teaching in 1960, she continued to concentrate on her painting full time. She had a big art show at Howard University for which she created something totally different from anything she had done before. Inspired by nature, she created paintings with tiny bright rectangles and repeating shapes. It became her signature style, which I just showed you. In 1972, she was 80 years old and her paintings were exhibited at the Whitney Museum of American Art. This was the first ever solo exhibition of an African-American woman artist at one of America's most important art museums. Alma is truly a testament to being dedicated to the thing you love and having the patience to let it grow. I love her paintings because all of that color just makes me feel happy. And I think that we should all express our creativity to feel that joy. And sometimes painting things that are around us in different ways with color can always make us smile. Today's featured lunch item is a chicken patty on a whole grain bun, salad, some beans, a Valentine cookie, strawberries, and an ice treat, and your choice of milk. Mm -mm, yummy. Thank you, Food Services staff, for providing the children in Brea with delicious and nutritious meals. As a reminder, there will be no meal service on Monday as we observe President's Day, so make sure you pick up your meals today from 12.30 to 1.30 at either Aero Vista Elementary School, Laurel Elementary School, or Brea Country Hills Elementary School. Today's animal facts come by request of Brandon. Brandon wanted to learn more about the giant squid. Look at that thing moving. Now that's what it looks like underground. What's interesting is we really only know about the giant squid when it washes ashore. So there you can see a person next to a giant squid and that might help you get an idea of how giant they really are. So the giant squid is massive, and when grown to full size, it can be over 30 feet long. These mysterious eight-armed creatures are rarely seen by humans. Most of what we know comes from when we find them washed up on beaches. Giant squid, along with their cousin, the colossal squid, have massive, huge eyes. In fact, their eyes are the size of a beach ball. That's really big. 
I just wanted that to resonate with you. It's a very, very giant eye. Those eyes are the largest eyes in the animal kingdom and are about 10 inches in diameter. <laughs> That's scary. Their big eyes help them to spy objects in the dark depths of where they live. Most animals can't see anything way down deep in the ocean, but because of those massive eyes, the giant squid can. Like other squid species, they have eight arms and two longer tentacles um, that are kind of like whips. Um, and that helps them bring food to their mouths. And their mouths are a lot like beaks, kind of like a bird. Their diet is mostly fish, but they also eat shrimp and even other squid. And some suggest that they may even attack and eat small whales. So we've talked about how big a whale is. Well, this giant squid can eat that scary. Um, they maneuver their massive bodies with fins that seem too small for the rest of their bodies. They use a, a, a funnel as a propulsion system. And what that does is it draws water into their mantle, which is the main part of their body. And it kind of forces it out the back to push themselves forward. I don't know why I was trying to show you what that looks like because it's not like that. But imagine water going into the squid's body and then like a jet, it pushes it out and it propels it forward. And then it uses its um, tentacles and arms to kind of keep that momentum and direction going. Very interesting animal. We don't know too much about it, um, but we will continue to study them because that is what scientists do. Okay, buddies, it's, that's enough about the giant squid. It's time for me to go and for you to learn. Let's soar, Olinda, and make it a great day. Fly by, eagles.